So here's an article that comes from Trinfinity8.com. And you can go there to read this article for yourself. I'm just going to summarize it here for you. Exploring the Great Pyramids Underground Water Tunnels. So a network of underground chambers and water tunnels has been found beneath pyramids like the Great Pyramid in Egypt's Giza Plateau. These tunnels have been hidden and off limits for centuries, accessible only to a select few. The ancient saying, as above, so below, implies that these tunnels mirror the mysteries and significance of the pyramids above ground. Now, obtaining permission to explore the tunnels involved lengthy negotiations starting in 2017, overcoming initial suspicion from Egyptian authorities. Now, in early 2018, Dr. Kathy Forti, with an Egyptologist and a military escort, entered the tunnels at 4.30 a.m., guided by an inspector. The entrance, known as the Osiris Shaft, they call it that because they think that's where Osiris was buried, led to three underground levels, the last of which reached water tunnels 125 feet below ground. The first level was an empty room, while the second had niches for seven sarcophagi, two of which were still present but empty. What happened to the other sarcophagi? Who knows? Out of a shaft that's 120 feet below ground. Because those sarcophagi look like they weigh hundreds of pounds. Stories of underground chambers from ancient Egyptian priests were confirmed by a survey in 1993. The Osiris shaft was originally found in the 1930s with ongoing debates about its age and purpose. Now, the lowest chamber has been flooded since its discovery, with the source of the water remaining a mystery. Dr. Forti noted the presence of a sarcophagus underwater and collected water samples showing unusual salinity levels. Basically, it was salt water. But they didn't know where the salt water came from. Similar water tunnels exist beneath pyramids worldwide, suggesting a common architectural feature. Some believe these tunnels could predate Egyptian civilization, possibly linked to an ancient advanced culture. But the Egyptian authorities are cautious about fully exploring these tunnels. I wonder why? Possibly due to their historical implications. And that is not very surprising as they are very political about the whole thing. They would let a million people die before they let anyone explore and find out what's really going on with those pyramids. Dr. Forti has her theories about how the water in those tunnels got there, and others have theories as well. Maybe, just maybe, the Egyptian authorities put that water there. Maybe they flooded those tunnels intentionally. Why? Most likely to keep explorers out, or maybe, just maybe, to keep something in. Every minute of every day, your body heals, repairs, and regenerates you from the inside out. Yet everyday exposure to heavy metals and toxins builds up and blocks your body's natural abilities. Natural zeolite is nature's answer to our toxic body burden. Breakthrough sound wave technology creates the world's first colloidal zeolite. Touch tone essentials Pure Body Extra Colloidal Zeolite helps clean out the chemicals from the body with an easy-to-use spray 
so you can make room for healthy in your life. Click the link in the description box below to order your supply of zeolite today. Because now is the time to live your best life. So folks, when I think about underground tunnels connecting one pyramid to another, it's hard to imagine that an ancient civilization would do such a thing for the sake of security and privacy. In other words, one of the theories is that they were secret passages that royalty and others could use to move underground undetected. But that theory to me doesn't really hold water. It just sounds very unnecessary. Another theory is that the water in the tunnels acts as a source of power or a coolant if the pyramids were used as power plants. In her article, Dr. Forti mentions that in one of the tunnel systems, there is a passage that leads to 12 separate spaces that could be the size of several football fields. Now, she didn't actually go into this section. They were analyzed. And then it occurred to me that perhaps the pyramids were nothing more than entrances into an underground society or civilization. Does that make sense? Is that a possibility? Is that the reason why there are so many pyramids on every continent? There are so many researchers, Eric Von Doniken, Graham Hancock, Robert Baval, David Hatcher Childress, Andrew Collins, Philip Copens. They all have the idea that there is indeed a network of underground tunnels and hidden chambers that lead to underground complexes. You see, if anyone were to discover that the vast majority of these pyramids were simply entrances into underground cities, then the world would take their attention off the pyramids and then focus on what is in these underground complexes. It would change a lot of history and ideas about the world. They would simply see the pyramids as just doorways to the underworld, which is what many researchers have said for years. That's what the Egyptians intended to build these things for. That these were tombs to carry the pharaoh to the underworld. But most people wouldn't think that the pyramids were literally doorways to an actual underground world. Now, how many of you have heard of geomancy? You probably already know what it is. It's just that the term isn't commonly spoken. It is a form of divination that involves interpreting patterns or symbols derived from natural features or random markings on the earth. It has been practiced in various cultures throughout history and involves the use of elements such as soil, stones, or patterns formed by casting objects on the ground or making marks on the ground. It's like when someone throws down a bunch of chicken bones to see where they land, and they can see into the future by the pattern formed when the bones land. It's almost like any other tool of divination, just on a much larger scale. The reason I bring this up is because China, among other things, seems to be extremely protective and secretive about its landscape of pyramids. And they've got quite a few, a lot of them which are much larger than the pyramids of Giza. And I just want to show you an article that I came across which sounds very interesting. Now, you can verify this article on your own when you have time. I just want to quickly read this to you because I find what it reads towards the end to be very interesting. The whole article is, really. But let me just show you this. Pyramids of China, Ronald P. Anhard. The pyramids of Egypt are world famous. Some know that there are three times more pyramids in Mexico and Mesoamerica than in Egypt. Very few are familiar with the Chinese pyramids. Several of these are at least twice the height of the Egyptian Great Pyramid. Gigantic. There are at least three separate locations thousands of miles apart. 
In an earlier article, I discussed two areas in general. A third was reported by Professor Chi Peneao, University of Peking. In Lake Tonlin, a pyramid was estimated to be about 1,000 feet tall. What I reported is that there are the spectacular Shenxi giants in central China. Seven pyramids of enormous size lie along a seven-mile plain a short distance west of Xianfu. These pyramids are in decreasing size in their relative position. The first and largest pyramid is about 1,000 feet high, twice that of Cheops. The base is 1,500 feet, three times that of the Great Pyramid. Thus it is at least four times larger in total volume than the largest Egyptian pyramid. Very limited data suggests that these Chinese giants are at least five to 6,000 years old. Since the article was published, additional information has been personally received from a friend who lived in China. He reported that the angle for the first pyramid is 52.3 degrees. This angle, he advised, actually tunes the pyramid frequency in seven steps from two microcycles to one million cycles per second. A charged polarized beam from the apex extends into the Earth's atmosphere magnetic field and penetrates into the Earth. These magnetic fields are multiplied 28 times, thus the pyramids become part of the Earth energy circuit. Here is new data for the second Shenxi pyramid. It is a dating pyramid, while the largest pyramid is all white. The second is color-coded on all four sides. The west is black, the south red, east green, and the north white. From my pyramid advisor, its resultant number reads 0259. This pyramid was left uncapped, but if it had been, it would have been about 800 feet tall, still larger than the Great Pyramid of Cheops. China then has at least three pyramids much greater than any Egyptian pyramid. I have been advised that somehow the Chinese used pyramids as a means of communicating for thousands of years. The largest Shenxi pyramid is known to some as the Master Pyramid. The pyramids at Giza are smaller copies. More and more data indicates that the pyramids were used as an energy focusing device to multiply energy and to allow its storage in the earth. It had been earlier hypothesized and now verified that these ancient pyramids are also somehow communicative devices. So in other words, what this article is claiming is that the pyramids are a way to generate or focus natural energy, which many people have already theorized, and they can be used as an interface for communication. But with what? Other pyramids? Stars, alien beings, fallen angels, the dead, or whatever gods they worshipped in those days? Now here's the thing. Even if this was the case, or even if this was the belief at the time, it really doesn't explain why there are chambers and tunnels underneath these pyramids. According to Hopi legend, the ant people were subterranean beings who played a crucial role in rescuing the Hopi ancestors during a great catastrophe. The stories describe a period when the surface world became uninhabitable due to a disaster such as a great flood or intense heat. The ant people who lived underground provided refuge to the Hopi people, leading them into their subterranean homes to save them from the surface through kivas and the sapapu or pit house, a hole in the ground like a well. The ant people are said to have lived in extensive underground caverns and tunnels. They describe these caverns as being well organized and capable of supporting the Hopi people until it was safe to return to the surface. Generally, the ant people are depicted as humanoid in form meaning they have a body structure similar to that of humans, including a head, torso, arms, and legs. Their appearance allows them to interact with the Hopi ancestors in a manner similar to human beings. 
despite their human form, the ant people are often described as having some ant-like traits. And this can include features like large, prominent eyes, larger heads, a strong sense of community or hierarchy, similar to ant colonies, and a focus on survival and protection. Now here's what's interesting about this story and other stories around the world. Elongated skulls have been discovered in various locations around the world, including near pyramid sites. In ancient Egypt, near the Great Pyramid of Giza, elongated skulls have been found in burial sites. They say that cranial elongation was a practice among certain elite groups. And although that may be true, what would make these people want to do that in the first place? Maybe to mimic some being that had this elongation naturally? In Mesoamerica, across the water, where pyramids like those at Teotihuacan and Chichen Itza dominate the landscape, elongated skulls have been uncovered in burial sites and ceremonial locations. The Almec and Zapotec civilizations, known for their architecture and complex social structures, practice cranial elongation as a symbol of high status or spiritual significance. The elongated skulls found in these regions often accompany elaborate artifacts and ceremonial objects, reinforcing their association with important social and religious roles, which is why they think that. In the Andes, the discovery of elongated skulls around pyramid sites, such as those found in Peru, has added to the mystique of Andean civilizations. These skulls were attributed to the Inca and pre-Inca cultures, and they were thought to reflect the practice tied to elite classes and possibly linked to ritualistic or symbolic purposes, as they think. And in China, the Tarim Basin mummies and other ancient burial sites have revealed elongated skulls that challenge conventional historical narratives. The discovery of these skulls in a region known for its ancient trade routes hints at a network of interactions that spanned across Eurasia. And they think the cranial elongation possibly served as a marker for cultural or social affiliations and blah 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 right they keep saying the same thing for different cultures around the world and don't want to bring aliens or subterranean beings into the mix when their repeated explanations just sound like they're explaining things away yeah i'm sure all these civilizations far away from each other had the same ideas of being longheads just because they thought it was cool. Anyway, that's all for now and there is more to come. Watch the video on shape power and how energy flows through the pyramid shape. I actually did a home experiment with this. If you haven't seen that experiment, watch that video. It will be linked on screen at the top right corner of this video in the description box and pinned comment below. If you like this video, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. And until next time, everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. And as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon.